is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Lars Christian Lund, who is the Vice President, Corporate Business Development and Marketing of 3Shape, a developer of 3D scanners and CAD CAM software solutions for the dental and audio industries, an experienced MedTech VP with over 10 years executive management experience from market-leading international companies. Lund leads the 3Shape global marketing team and business development with focus on strategic account leadership, market development, mergers and acquisitions and corporate development based on a strong educational foundation from some of the best business schools in the world lund possesses a strong leadership track record with strong financial results and top ratings from colleagues employees customers and managers through sharp analytical skills teamwork persistence and a strong focus on the customer lund is capable of covering a wide range of positions within sales marketing general management business development and change management he is a alma mater of Copenhagen Business Schools, 93, a Master's in Economic Marketing, the University of British Columbia MBA, INSAID, a General Management Program, Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, Harvard Business School, Driving Digital Strategic Program. I want to thank you so much. Basically, you guys have walked away with the intraoral scanning market. I mean, you, you don't hear anybody saying, oh yeah, you should get the 3M True Def, or you should get this system, or you should get that system. I mean, you basically just own that space. Do you agree or disagree? No, I, I agree. We have had a really um, some great, we have a really a, a great years. We have been fortunate enough to have a, a development team which have developed a, a great product uh, based on, you could say, close collaborations with basically dentists throughout the world. So what we do is that we have a corporate advisory board with dentists from everywhere, from Brazil here to, to Denmark, to US and to Canada and so on for many countries, which give us input about how we best tailor our products to the needs of dentists. And we have been fortunate enough really to see very strong uh, growth rates uh, and, you know, of triple digits in the interall sp uh, scanner space. So it has been, been a great year. Uh, we started out. Uh, we started out relatively small, uh, the company, uh, all the way back in uh, in year two thousand. So our two founders, Nikolai Dijkman and Thijs Clausen, they met each other at a Christmas party. So um, you know, Denmark the Christmas parties usually involve a lot of alcohol, and uh, you have some friends <laughs> around, and, uh, and so on. <laughs> and uh, then uh, Thijs, he had made a a project at the. Um, uh, his uh, master project at the uh, engineering school in, in Copenhagen and um, and Nikolai he was uh, finishing his master thesis at Copenhagen Business School so they thought okay let's make a, a plan together and they uh, started uh, you know making a business plan sending it into a to a, a innovation cup which was hosted by McKinsey at the, at that time and they uh, they finished second there in their business plan for three shape about a how to you they commercialize 3D scanners and software, and then 3Shape was founded in, in year 2000. At that time, uh, we were looking at, you know, what should we venture into? So we looked at, you know, shoes, should we do 3D scanning for shoes? Should we do 3D scanning for components? Should that be 3D scanning for uh, for, uh, for ears, uh, for, for the uh, hearing aid? And it started being uh, uh, audio equipment, basically in the ear hearing, Eight, which was which really got the big start for 3 shape. So we started out there, and today 80% of hearing aids in the world is used with the, is done with 3Shape software of in the ear hearing aids. Then in 2005, uh, we thought, okay, let's look at another space. So we looked at dental lab scanners, and uh, so in 2005 was our entry into dental there. And today we are the most used uh, uh, lab scanner. Um, in, in the world and our software. And basically, if you take our lab scanners and TRIA scanners totally, then um, each second, each day, 365 days a year, a restoration is made in 3Shape software in more than 100 countries across the globe. Repeat so, those last numbers. Okay, so every second, every hour, every day, uh, a restoration is made in 3Shape software. Throughout in, in more than 100 countries. So we have basically, a, we can follow it and see, you know, how when US wake up, we can see the 
the scanner is sending it up in the cloud and so on. So basically each second the restoration is made in our software. Well, you know, um, Bill Gates is recommending a book now by uh, John Doerr on management, and it's an amazing book, and it's amazing how this is the venture capitalist of Kleiner Perkins who picked Apple and Amazon and uh, Google and, he, and Netscape, and he just always, he always picks the right company. And they asked him, and when he starts his book, they say, everybody wants to know, how does an engineer like you, how do you always know the the best uh, company to invest in? And he always says, I start with um, technical excellence. He goes, you have to have technical excellence, and that's what you guys have. But this is Dentistry Uncensored. Um, I think everyone knows um, that um, that you own this uh, scanning space. Um, but by the way, I've, I've been to your company and took three of my four boys um, and I, I just got to say something to Americans. Um, I know everybody thinks America is the greatest country in the world, blah, 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 blah. But it's not. I, I think it's Scandinavia. I, I think the greatest civilizations I've ever been to are Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Finland. I mean, it is just a culture of excellence. I mean, from the living conditions, all the lights work. I mean, it just um, – but, but I have a theory on why you guys – are the greatest civil Scandinavia is the greatest civilizations. I think it's because during the winter it's so damn cold. The only th- option you have is to either stay in bed or work hard all day. Uh, so I, I think uh, I think if you were in Arizona and during those uh, winters you could go out and play all day. I think uh, uh, you guys wouldn't be nearly as technically excellent. But but the, but the biggest. Um, and by the way, you guys treated us great, and um, and seeing Plan Mecca in Helsinki, Finland. I mean, they, they're just some of the greatest companies in the world up there. But um, but this is dentistry uncensored. I want to talk about what's controversial. It's the yeah. open open format versus closed system. I mean, you have some companies like uh, Serona, where the dentists complain that um, you know it, it doesn't really work would uh, play nice with other systems. Some systems are open. Some systems are closed. Uh, where do you weigh in on that? Yeah, we believe in open system technology. We believe the dentists should be free to choose the product they want. Uh, we don't believe in using the scanner as a as a razor, then some material or implant or clear liner as a, as a blade to earn our money. So with 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 the three shape three scanner, you're free to choose the mill you want to work with if you want an inside mill, you're free to use the lab you want to work with, you're free to use between 40 different treatment providers uh, in, uh, within uh, orthodontics. So we believe in open system. And, what, and your scanner, um, the three shape um, trios? Yeah. Is that, is that your top selling product, three shape trios? Yes. Uh, after we launched it in, in 2012, it's really taken off. And that is uh, by far the majority of, uh, of, uh, of our business uh, today. And it's, it's going really well throughout the globe. And how much is that in U.S. dollars? Uh, we, we, don't, uh, we, don't disclose the, um, we don't disclose, you could say, uh, exact sales numbers. But we've just today announced our our annual uh, report and it no, looked no, at I mean, I mean, how much does it cost for the dentist to buy the scanner ah, okay yeah okay we have different um, uh, solutions it started as low as about twenty thousand us dollars for um, uh, what we call a monochrome so black and white scanner and then if you want the full-fledged uh, three shape three years move uh, wireless uh, then it can go all the way up to fifty thousand dollars so there's a span we don't we both cater for the uh, price sensitive segments, but also the, uh, the dentists in Manhattan, which really want to have the best treatment experience for their patients, they can also have that option from us. Uh, can we pay for it in Canadian dollars? You can pay for it in Canadian <laughs> dollars uh, <laughs> as well. Um, so how much is the software agreement? When, when, when you, if you bought a $20,000 three-shape Cheerios monochrome, how much is the software agreement? And what is that? What's yeah. the monthly cost of that? We uh, we we charge for it. Uh, usually, well, our sales model is indirect. So we will sell in in US. We will sell through uh, the Henry Shines, the Pattersons, the uh, the Straumans, and um, and then you could say they charge a price uh, to the market. Usually, they bundle it into a monthly fee. So they say to the customer, you pay for both the scanner and the um, and the subscription over a 
over a 50 month period and then it comes to between five hundred dollars to a thousand dollars per month everything included and do, do you think the do you think at the end of the day a digital scan is a higher quality than a vinyl polysiloxane when it gets to the lab yeah that's the that's the uh, that's the funny thing in the beginning the studies focused on you know is the scanner as accurate as a manual impression but these days uh, it's basically uh, it's basically uh, the result shows it's it's better it's it's a more it's more accurate um, than the scanners. That's what the what the studies tells us today. We also have a, a shape measurement, which was you know where we measure the shape digitally, and that was actually measured in a study to be uh, more precise than the human eye. So basically, uh, I believe digital is not only more cost efficient and quicker. I also believe it's better. Yeah, and I, I've been telling Dennis all the time. I said, "Look, I'm I'm 55. I got four grandkids. I always tell these old dentists, don't be taking a shade. You got a 20 year old dental assistant. Their eye still works. You you know you're you're. I, I have to buy the iPhone, the largest iPhone, and wear readers. Just read my iPhone. Why why would you take the shade if you got readers and a large iPhone?" When you got a 20, 25 year old assistant that still has a working functional eyeball, um, you know they always say the four finger success is, is it faster? Is it easier? Is it higher in quality? Is it lower mm -hmm. in cost? And the fifth one is everything over time gets more miniaturized. Um, mm -hmm. the, these dental students are coming out, you know, three to four hundred thousand dollars in student loans. Do you think it's faster, easier, higher quality, and cheaper? to get a three-shaped trio scanner or just to use your um, $15 uh, vinyl polysiloxane triple tray? At the end of the day, what's a better business decision? Uh, we, what we say now is you should, um, people are saying, should I invest in a small car or should I invest in an install scanner? Um, and what we say to people, you should invest in an in a install scanner so you can buy two cars. Because basically, uh, it's 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 a it's a great uh, it's it's a great investment. There's there's two things in it. Of course, there's the would say you uh, save time, so you can see more uh, more patients. You avoid uh, you could say as many uh, errors relating to you know having to retake the impression or or so, or so on. But the also the key driver is that you also basically allow the dentist allows to sell more to their patient because. If you are, you're usually to maybe you just see your your social six teeth. But once you uh, scan the mouth, once you show the patient a full-fledged, full-arched color scan, you simply improve the patient dialogue. So you see some look at your smile. Maybe you should uh, consider whether you want to have a line of treatment. Maybe uh, uh, you are grinding your teeth. Uh, so on. so you just improve the treatment dialogue, and basically this allows for the patients to take more responsibility to their to the oral care, but also for the dentist to offer uh, different types of, of treatment, whether it's uh, it's uh, it's orthodontic treatment or it's implant treatment and so on. It just facilitates a good good dialogue. So dentists buying a scanner does not only see a better workflow, they also see a better improved uh, patient uh, dialogue and the ability to basically easily get the, uh, the patients to accept the treatment. Um, I... Um, first of all, I want to thank all my homies for, um, gosh darn, 23,000 Twitter followers at HowardFran.com. Uh, thank you so much for following me on Twitter. But I just retweeted uh, something from uh, you. Um, yeah. And um, you, got, you just started this, uh, this uh, tweeting page. It's called at Straight Talk DDS. You got 17 followers, so we, we're going to explode that because I just retweeted you to 23,000. Um, I retweeted... It's an interesting deal. Um, it starts off with, um, tell a line to stop punishing dentists and orthodontists. Sign a petition to demand reinstatement of interoperability between at Invisalign, at Three Shapes, Trio, Scanner today. 85% of Three Shape Trios and Invisalign users said that Align's actions will have a negative impact on their business. Tell a line to stop disrupting the market. Um, and then the last one... Um, 46% of dental professionals said Align's decision to end interoptability with three shape trio scanner has caused them to lose trust in Align. By the way, Align's the company that owns Invisalign and iTero scanners, correct? 
That's correct. So, so um, what's going on here? It sounds like it looks like there's a small war going on between Three Shape and Align Technology. Yeah, uh, we um, we actually uh, it started. We had a great collaboration with uh, Align Technology for uh, for a few years, and uh, the the Trias was allowed to send files to Align, and with the uh, explo- ex- explosive growth of Trias, uh, then of course the um, uh, the, the business grew for both Align Technology and for 3 shape But then suddenly, uh, uh, by the end of last year, Align chose to uh, to make a lawsuit against 3 shape uh, for for certain patents, which we believe is you know completely uh, ungrounded, and we are obviously doing everything we can to uh, to defend ourselves in that case. And at that time, uh, they also launched a, a, what they call, what's called an ITC c- c- case. So they tried to stop us from selling trios into the American market. And then they also closed the connection to trios for all American dentists. It still works in Canada. It still works in, in basically 19, 99 other countries, but they closed it down in, uh, in, uh, in North America. So we had a storm of customers calling us, why is this connection um, not working anymore? You can imagine if, if, if you're signed up with T-Mobile and suddenly you cannot call AT&T, you know, customers get upset about that. So we had a, a storm of customers saying, what's happening there? How can Align does do this? And uh, basically, we opened the, the Straight Talk Dental Coalition to get a, a, give dentists a voice to share their concern because they don't want to be triggered into a, a, a closed infrastructure. So all these dentists, more than 2,000 dentists in North America, lost their connection to, to uh, Invisalign from Trias, and then they had to. They were offered to buy a, a new scanner uh, at fifteen thousand dollars from Align. So uh, yeah, it was uh, basically, and we surveyed those two thousand uh, dentists, and eighty-five percent said that this will have a negative impact on their business. We think Align should stop hurting uh, dentists and open up this connection again. So this is why we we opened up uh, this Straight Talk Dental Coalition. Well, why don't, why don't you post that on Dental Town? God, there's a quarter million dentists from all around the world on that on that site. Yeah, we should we should uh, we should definitely uh, do that. That's a that's a that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, you got you got two thousand members. You could have you could have five thousand read it today. On, yeah, no, on we that. should uh, we should do that. It should be said that you know it might be that not so many have picked up on on Twitter, but actually we have had more than three hundred people in North America. Of the 2,000 which we sent out, the uh, uh, which which had the connection working for them, over 300 have sent letters directly to Align Technology asking them to reinstate the connection, and more than 50 have sent letters to their association, whether it's being the the American um, the uh, Academy of uh, of uh, sorry the AAO or it's been ADA or they have signed letters. More than 50 have signed letters to their institution asking them to, to do something about uh, about this. Um, well, the or- the orthodontists are um, a little miffed um, now that um, Align Technologies, which owns Invisalign Itero, bought uh, what was it, seventeen percent of Smiles Direct. So now they're yes, kind yes. of, uh, you know, they they feel like they really helped build this company's brand to what it is, and now the Align saying we don't we don't even need an orthodontist. And I think it's funny when dentists say, "Well, do you think I should learn how to do Align? I don't know how to do it." And I said, "Well." I don't think you do have to know how to do it because they're doing it in malls uh, with people who used to do mani pedis the day before and sell lipstick and makeup at a counter. Now, now they're doing it in Invisalign. In um, and and also, I think um, uh, what's the story on? A lot of people are saying that uh, their main patent technology, their, that their main patents have expired. Is that true or false? That's true. Uh, there was a. Uh, an article in Forbes magazine, actually, uh, I think it was in December, uh, which basically said that the main patents is expiring. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit like on pharma. When a drug goes off patent, usually prices fall and uh, competition comes. And that's what we have seen. So just at, uh, at the uh, AAO meeting uh, a few weeks back in, in Washington, D.C., we saw Henry Schein coming with their offer. We saw uh, ClearCorrect having great new offers, we saw new clear line offering from uh, 3M and so on. So this whole market is opening up and now the dentists have, have more choice rather than having one player having far the majority of the clear line market. So choice is coming to the market as these patents uh, expires. 
And uh, yeah, that was in the Forbes May 2018. It says bracing for competition, cheaper challengers enter Invisalign's $1.5 billion market. Invisalign has become a household world, 5 million patients of blah, blah, blah. It goes on and on and on. Uh, great yes. article. Um, so do you see, so who do you think's going to be, um, if Invisalign is number one in clear aligners, who do you think is going to be number two and three and four? Well, I think there's some there's some big players looking at at these market indices. And obviously now you've seen moves from the three M's. You have seen moves from uh, Henry Shine. You have seen uh, our metrics being bought by Densply Zerona and their uh, Sure Smile uh, solution. And uh, and oral, there's, oral, uh, oral metrics was bought by Densply Serona? Yes. Can you send me that, Ryan? Or oral metrics, M E T R I C X. Yeah, oral metrics. Yeah, so they and, were bought by. And, and did Henry Shine buy someone, or do they start their own? Uh, no, they uh, they haven't bought anyone. Strauman have bought Clear Correct. So obviously, you see all the big players in the dental scene, and you know who knows what what Omco and the Danaher Group will come with. But I think you will see all the major players in dental opening up in this space. And what we want to do from Three Shape is saying. If you buy a new scanner, think you want options. You should buy a scanner which integrates with all of them. All the other players, they're opening up their system. They're not going with a closed system like a line. They go with open system. So do you want to have one option or do you want to have 10 options? And then you can see who delivers best, the, best, uh, the best price and the best quality for you and, and, the, and the patients. Huh, that that is interesting. So so do you do you, but who do you think who do you think will win second place? Do you think it'll be uh, Strawman because they bought Clear Correct? I think it, I cannot judge. I'm not an orthodontist myself, so I haven't seen the the clinical uh, details of that. So I'll let the let the dentist and the orthodontist uh, try themselves and find out which solution is, is best for them. Now now with your three shape uh, with your trio system. I can scan the arch and then send that to a lab to make clear liners. Yes. And I can, how, how many different um, company labs uh, can I send that to? I mean, who, who is it open operability with as of today? It's basically, we opened up for, we have 40 different uh, treatment providers, whether, and it's not only clear liners, it's, 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 it's brackets and, and a lot of other orthodontic treatment providers. So it's completely open system. And we link up to all major players who want to uh, open from us, whether it's uh, it's an OMCO system, it's a 3M system, or you choose to want to work with flash aligners from India, you can also do that. So we have an open platform and we integrate with everyone who want to integrate with us. Uh, and aligner chosen to, to go the other way, unfortunately. Interesting. And yeah, I just found that oral... Um Oral Metrics. Their website is uh, Sure Smile. Yes, that's the brand. Yes, and that's the brand that's Plastic Owners. And that's is, out of Richardson, Texas. Wasn't one of the founders of Invisalign? Isn't that where he lived? I'm not. I, I don't know that, unfortunately. I thought there was a, a Pakistan a man from Pakistan who had a lot of the patents or invented mm. a lot of them. I thought he was uh, in Rich, Richardson, Texas. Um, maybe. Uh, yeah, it it, 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 it it could be. I'm not into the details on that one. You know um, the details on that one. Um, so do you do you find um, it it hard to work with orthodontists and general dentists when it comes to orthodontics? Because a lot of orthodontists uh, get very upset that they won't um, they won't work with a rep if the rep calls on general dentists. I mean, a lot of these companies will tell me off the record that they have to have a rep in Phoenix that deals with just the orthodontist. And then, a, and then another one, a shady character who lays low, who deals with all the low life general dentist. Uh, do, do you? Uh, we we call it channel conflict. Do you do you do you see channel conflict between orthodontists and general dentists when discussing orthodontics? I saw it. Uh, uh, I saw some channel conflicts during the um, the AAO meeting. Uh, there was called an extraordinary meeting required by members of AAO, uh, and they invited. Uh, they called Align for, for to discuss three topics. One of them was, of course, the um, the opening of the Trias connection. There was one topic. The other thing was the uh, the uh, the opening of stores by Align, and the third one was that they had. Um, yeah, what was the third one? There was um, 
there was reinstatement of Trias, there was a line opening stores, and then there was the investment in 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 the um, Smiles Direct Smiles Smile Direct Club, which and I think during that time some orthodontists felt a little bit. Yeah, first Align, you know, worked a lot with the orthodontists, giving them more business. Then they moved into GPs. Now they're opening stores and investing in clear correct. So they're kind of bypassing them. So I saw the tension there. In terms of sales force, uh, I think our um, we work with the uh, with Henry Shine and also Henry Shine Orthodontics uh, in that space. We work with Great Lake Orthodontics as well and other distribution partners. And we haven't seen that because the orthodontists really want the product and then they'll find uh, uh, someone to help them there. We also have our own specialists in the field throughout the U.S. Uh, supporting the uh, uh, supporting the reps if there's very difficult questions. And we also have a call center in North America where, where we can answer the more uh, difficult questions uh, and a completely new field where it might not be able to answer. I have a whole different view of this orthodontic market. You know, I, I'm 55. I got four grandchildren. When when I grew up in Kansas, there was uh, these big Catholic families that, I mean, my mom and dad had seven kids. My friend Brian Hesse, his parents had 21 kids. And back in the day, the only child with the worst bite got orthodontics. It was a luxury for that person who almost looked like there was something wrong with them. You know, you knew they weren't going to grow up and get married and have children someday. Okay. Um, yeah. But now, um, with birth control and now the family size dropping under two, everybody gets ortho. And what, I see, what I've been seeing for the last 30 years is now you have 30, 40-year-old women coming in with just a slightly rotated front tooth or lower tooth. And, and then when you're doing Invisalign on them, you find out it's like the third time they've had braces. So when you look at a planet that's approaching 8 billion people and, you're, and you have this, um, women are so into beauty and appearance. And, and I, I think orthodontics is something that they're going to get like every 10 or 15 years. And they're paying top dollar for some slight little rotation thing, just just like the number one cosmetic surgery in the United States, believe it or not, is eyelid surgery. And as a man for 55 years, I've never looked at a single woman and thought something was right or wrong with her eyelid. I didn't even, I didn't even know an eyelid could, I don't, I don't even know what the hell could be wrong with an eyelid, but... When, they're, when the number one cosmetic surgery is eyelids and they're dropping $6,500 for Invisalign because some little tooth is slightly rotated, I think the orthodontic market could easily grow double digit for the next 50 years. I mean, there's not going to be any end to women staring in the mirror. Look, look at Snapchat. Why do they love Snapchat? Because when they take a selfie on their smartphone, they don't like it. They want to take it on a Snapchat so they can change the color and all, do all this silly stuff to it. So, I mean, I think rising boat lifts all tides. I think this market's going to grow strong for five decades. I, I, completely, uh, I completely agree. Uh, we see, I mean, I was speaking to one of the uh, leaders from one of the major orthodontic companies, and he was saying, you know, basically – Part of it is, is the beauty market. And the biggest driver for sexual attraction is not the lips, it's not the eye lips, it's not the breast, it's not the way the, the way it does. It's basically the smile. You can have everything perfect, but if your smile is a disaster, people say, ooh, what's happening there? And therefore, uh, basically, there's an underinvestment in, in, in good teeth. And uh, we see that a lot. I mean, in some markets, someone was, was saying to me, like in Brazil, you know, it's nearly like you prioritize your daughter smiles before her, her, her university education, which is obviously not the right priority, but it's, it's a big driver, and we are seeing it throughout the world. So it's a big market, and we believe in open technology, which makes it both more, uh, more affordable, but also make it, uh, you could say, give the, uh, the patient's choice. But I'm sure this market will grow significantly. And I just want to say one thing. A lot of people accuse uh, me on all my pictures that my face has been photoshopped, and I want to say that I am all natural. I know I look perfectly photoshopped, but th th this is all natural. Um, I want to ask one more question on the scanner, then I want to move on. Um, do you think being wireless was a big driver of your success? The, you know, a lot, lot of products they say are so successful because they, they were better at packaging. Do you, do you mm -hmm. think the wireless was a big component? 
I think the wireless was a significant component. I think this the speed and the accuracy was even higher. But then obviously, we're still today the world's only wireless scanner. And I mean, how many people have a wired phone today? How many people have a wired remote at home for their TV? Wireless is the future. And it also talks a little bit to our innovation. A lot of uh, competition was saying, oh, you cannot make a wireless scanner. It will never work. There'll be too much interference. We tried it. But we just tried a little bit harder, invested a little bit more innovation power. And I mean, we have more than 30% of all our staff are engineers who work in development. So we invest heavily in this. So, and it's proven out to be a, a big driver. And the uptake of three years wireless has been extremely high. And uh, recently the three years wireless was also awarded from its design, uh, awarded the, uh, the Red Dot Award, which is kind of the, uh, the Oscars for design. Uh, it was uh, awarded with the Wet Dot Design Award and Trias Wireless Scanner. So it's also recognized in the, uh, in the industry for that. But wireless speed and accuracy and also the design of the product has been a big driver to, to our success. Keeping it real, the thing I love about the wireless is whenever you have a wire and when, whenever you have a cord, um, you know, those operatories are only like 10 feet wide by 10. You, most of them are 10 foot by 12. Um, you're always, the dentist or the assistant is always uh, catching their foot on the cord and then the thing's bouncing off the floor. I mean, you're always pulling it off the counter. I mean, just the fact that it's wireless means that it's not going to be dropped onto the floor at least every 30 days. Some, I mean, those x-ray sensors are five grand and I can't tell you how many times me personally or the assistant, you're tripping over that cord. The next thing you know, you see your, your x-ray sensor uh, bouncing all around. I'm, I'm going to switch gears completely mm -hmm. uh, to CAD CAM. Um, mm -hmm. you, that, you uh, are big in that space too. Talk, talk about uh, CAD CAM, chair side milling. Yeah. So, so basically, again, we, have, uh, we believe in open technology. So the dentist can choose the workflow they want. Most dentists choose to take a scan with our scanner and then they send it to, uh, to the lab and then the lab will design in our design software a dental system, they will design a restoration and send it back to the dentist. So that's what we call sensor lab workflow. Then we also have what we call, um, we have our, our own design software, Trias Design Studio, where basically the dentist can design themselves if they prefer to offer some patients uh, same day dentistry. So that's the other option. There's also some labs, they prefer to go to a design service. So they will take the design and send it up in the cloud and have a, a design service uh, doing the design for them. But we let the dentist choose which workflow they prefer. In terms of people of dentists wanted to just use Trias Design uh, Studio to design in, then they can choose between different mills. There's a new mill coming out from, uh, from uh, Iowa Cloud, the program mill one, you know, a lot of people are eagerly waiting for that. So they will come out with a with a, a chair side mill for, for dentists. Uh, there's also a mills coming out from, Bauman um, uh, is, is, is launching a, 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 a new mill. Uh, and there's- uh, Strawman there's is? VHS. Yeah, Strawman also have a, have a, have a mill they're, they're launching today. They also offer, offer that. And basically, we, so we connect to all the different mills which connect to us. VHF has a mill we, we uh, we, we connect connect to as well. So there's a lot, there's Roland as well. So we have a lot of different connections. So we say to dentists, you know, choose the scanner which works best for you. And then if you want to go to our side, uh, for some cases, you can do it at Trias Design Studio, and then you can choose the mill which works for you. The same way of this laptop I'm having this Skype conversation with, I can both print from a HP printer or a Lenovo printer, or whatever I want. I'm not forced to get it from Lenovo, as, which is making my PC. So it's an open network as well. Huh, that'll be it. So, you know, I, I, I really, uh, if you're listening to me out there, um, you know, I, I got chair side milling all that. But, you know, I'm, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, Phoenix has a million people, but the Metro has 3.8 million people. I understand chair side milling uh, for rural markets out in the small town. But my gosh, I mean, you know, my lab man for 30 years, you know, he, he's made 10,000 crowns. I, I would rather, for me, it's faster, easier, higher quality, lower cost to scan, send him the file. And if you need mm -hmm. the same day, um, he'll, he'll bring it back by the end of the day. I mean, you, you can schedule those patients. And I mean, you know, I, I, I think, um, but I, 
a lot of these people that are doing chair side milling, they say, oh, yeah, we, you know, you numb the tooth, prep it, scan it, mill it, and you can do the whole thing chair side in an hour. Well, when they say that, I mean, I, I don't know whether to laugh or cry because when I talk to dentists in the field and I'm out there lecturing damn near every week and, and um, they, 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 they say that t- ties up a chair for two to three hours. And I don't know if, when you go to the doctor, but, you know, no one wants to sit in the doctor's room for two to three hours. Um, but if, if you want same day, um, you know, like say, if you want same day, I understand in rural, but you're going to have to get an extra chair. If you get a chair side milling machine, you need an extra operatory because you're really going to tie up your chairs a long time. Um, but um, but in the big city, I think, uh, the, and that's where, you know, right now, 50% of the population in the 20 richest countries in the world live in the urban, not the rural. And they say by 2050 that that's going to be 70% are going to be urban and only 30% rural, uh, which I disagree with. I don't think that's going to be true because I think when you have driverless cars, uh, people won't care about the community. Like they, the, the, you know, their driverless car might just be a bed with a blanket and a pillow and they – get up at six o'clock and they go crawl into their car and they push a button and go back to bed. And two hours later they wake up and they're downtown uh, Copenhagen. But, um, but anyway, I, I just think, um, I, I think chair side uh, milling is a rural play. I, I don't really think it's an urban play and um, it just takes too much time. And plus, you know, when you chair side mill, your assistant's never made a crown before and you got a lab man that's a mile away. And he, I mean, he's made, you know, 10,000 crowns a, a year or a decade for two or three decades. Um, but do, do, do you think chair-side milling, I mean, right now, what percent of crowns made in the United States do you think are made same-day chair-side milling? It's a low percentage. By far, the, the majority is made by labs. We can see it also in our design software. That's what, by what, far what the percent? majority of it. I wouldn't shoot on a percent, but I think we are, we are talking maybe – over 90% of crowns are made by labs today. And people have been pushing full chair side system. I, I agree to your perspectives. Also, the market which grows by far the fastest in digital is internal scanners was sent to lab. First of all, your initial investment is, you know, between 20,000 and 50,000 rather than plus 100,000. Then also your disruption to your workflow in the clinic is significantly uh, smaller as well. So we are a very strong believer in that central lab workflow. We just want to offer the dentist the choice they want. So if someone really want to do it, they can do it with our scanner because we are an open system. Uh, if they prefer the central lab workflow, which we also think for by far the majority of cases is the best, then they should do that. And that's the, the, what works, what, what uh, grows the fastest. That is dentist buying a scanner and sending it to the lab. That's the fastest set uh, growing segment in the market and I think that will be the majority of the market also going forward but there will be some people who prefer to do the milling themselves and will and will buy a mill for that and we cater for both needs yeah I just don't know why you went to college for eight years to become a lab tech I mean if you want to be a lab tech you could have saved a lot of student loan money and um and went and got a job at a lab I mean I, I just think um it's uh um your lab man is just better and by the way Germany um, everybody needs to take a, a note from Germany. What, what, you know, what America did back in the uh, '60s and the '70s, which was insane. The dental schools all closed down their laboratory deals, and they opened up all these hygiene deals. It was after Bob Barkley going around the country, um, telling everybody they should have preventative dentistry instead of pulling everyone's teeth doing dentures. And these dentists uh, didn't want to learn about it because they were so busy extracting everyone's teeth. They didn't want to learn about periodontal disease and hygienists. But the schools started opening up hygiene schools. Well, the only reason every dentist in America can have a hygienist or two or three doing all these cleanings, exams, and x-rays, which is what you would want your children and grandchildren to get, not extractions and a denture. Um, But when they opened up all those hygiene schools, they closed down all those dental laboratory schools. And the only country that really, really focuses on dental laboratory training is Germany. And I mean, my gosh, it takes just damn near as long to become a dentist as it does a master certified lab tech. And if you look deep into the biggest labs in the United States and Canada, you'll always find a German from Germany 
who went to several years of training. And then a lot of dentists were um, thinking that back in the 80s, the reason so many of these uh, Crown and Bridge uh, companies were exporting uh, to China was because of cheap labor. Well, I don't care if your labor is free. If they don't know how to make a crown, you can't open up a crown and bridge school. But you go to the only dental school in Hong Kong, their dental laboratory class is twice the number as their uh, dentist class. And when you go to those big labs out there like Modern Dental with um, what's mm. with uh, Godfrey, uh, I lo- just love Godfrey. I think he's uh, one of the smartest men I've ever met in my life. He said the reason Modern Dental got so big is because um, Hong Kong's dental school, every year he had a fresh class of these incredibly highly trained dental laboratory technicians uh, that that knew that. He said he could have never made Modern Dental Lab if he didn't have these highly educated places. We started this interview with John Deere's book um, and the the venture capitalist from uh, uh, Kleiner Perkins and his book – um, it's called, um, it's just a must read measure what matters. Um, yeah. it's, Bill Gates is telling everyone to buy it, but, but when you talk about measure, what matters, what matters is training your lab techs. And I think America, it's time for that pendulum to swing back. They really need to go back and model the system after Germany and Hong Kong. And, uh, and then at the end of the day, I think the best person, uh, that to make a crown is someone who only makes crowns and partials and dentures and implants. So l- I want to switch gears again on you. Um, implants. Um, yeah. how, how does uh, how does three shape? Uh, what what are, you, what are your thoughts on? Uh, well, well, we were talking about labs. Um, so if you have anything to add on dental laboratories, and I can, I can maybe add, add that. I mean, to your point about the the German labs. I mean, Germany was really out the fastest growing market we had in the and the first really market to adopt digital technology in the lab market. So they were, you know, front runners in the digital space. So they have a very, very high percentage of German labs have adopted uh, digital, have adopted, uh, you know, CAD CAM technology from, uh, from 3Shape and is using our digital system uh, software and, and our, our lab scanner. So I can really uh, support that picture we have of the, the highly trained uh, lab techs in, in Germany doing fabulous, uh, fabulous work. Yeah, and, and if you uh, American dentists listen to me, uh, b- the only way I can explain German uh, laboratory work is, remember, the Germans make Porsche, Mercedes, Volvo. You make Chrysler, Chevy, and Ford. Do I need to say more? I mean, if you, if you, I mean their level of, of quality in cars and dental labs, if you want to, I mean, wh- what does Ford even stand for? Uh, what is Fix or repair daily. I mean, I mean, gosh darn! When you when you buy a Ford or a Chevy or a Chrysler, it should come with a full time mechanic in the trunk. And um, and I'm telling you, Americans could reach that level of excellence if they went back to their 56 dental schools and opened back up these uh, these laboratory schools. And the labs would love it because these labs tell me. I mean, I talk to labs, small town labs in the middle of the Midwest. They might they'll they'll have an ad on monster job or craigslist or some jobs board for like three years saying we need you know a die trimmer a porcelain stacker or whatever whatever and they, they don't even give it a single application because i can't apply for a job if i don't know anything about it and mm-hmm. so so the laboratory is kind of built on apprenticeship it's the same as plumbers and roofers and construction you just go get a job and you work with your uncle eddie and he teaches you how to you know build sheetrock and plumbing and it's, it's apprenticeship if you believe in the apprenticeship then you should say that after your dental assistant assists you for for eight years she becomes a doctor of dental surgery and i i don't think anybody wants to give their dental assistant a doctorate in dental surgery just because she was your apprentice for eight years you got to get in that formal education but i yeah. but i i've noticed um i've noticed a lot of the labs with oral scanners one of the fast ways they're growing their business is they're giving discounts on incoming oral scans because they're saying things like, you know, when you send me a digital deal, I don't have to pay a human to pour up the impression. I don't have to pay them to trim the dye. Do you see that as a laboratory success business model, giving discounts to digital scanning if it saves the laboratory labor, time, and cost and money? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we with the case we sometimes use here is that we have a, a, a – 
a relatively small lab which was situated you could say in the outskirts of uh, of of, uh, of of Denmark and uh, it was a lab growing relatively small single digit percent maybe a little bit in minus some years then they started to go full fledged in with internal scanning uh, going out together basically with the offering free education when people bought a, a tria scanner or scanner from one of the uh, our competitors and then they said you know we offer you a a, a model free crown at a crown at a good price and then suddenly they were growing hundreds of percent so i think if you embrace technology as, as a lab and you offer a good model free crown that's the that's the future and there's a lot of lab which jumps on technology which are immensely successful and becomes you could say the technology advisor to the dentist both of course for model free crowns but also for for uh, for implants and maybe also in the future probably also for doing clear aligners why shouldn't the labs be able to uh, to make uh, clear aligners for uh, based on scan data for the uh, for the dentists rather than people having them done in a in a shop with with glue themselves they they bought somewhere you know i think uh, labs can do so much uh, so much more when they embrace technology and there's a lot of good examples of of labs doing so and being successful so I'm I'm going to really put, hold your feet to the fire. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I mean, ha, God, you had a half a dozen business degrees: Copenhagen Business School, University of British Columbia MBA, Wharton School, yeah. Harvard Business School. So let's say that let's say that my, um, your granddaughter just graduated from dental school. She's 25 years old. She has four hundred thousand dollars of student loans, and she says to you, Grandpa Lars, um, they didn't teach us anything in dental school, really. And I don't have time to learn anything. What are where should I focus on continuing education with the highest return on investment? Would you say would you say to her go into implants? Implants is the fastest growing. Would you say go into orthodontics and clear aligners? Uh, looking at your understanding of the macroeconomics of global dentistry, what what do you what continuing education do you think? It, what what segment of the dental market is growing fastest with the highest return on investment to go learn that sector? I think uh, I mean they're successful in plant companies. Strawman is immensely successful at the moment. There's other companies as well being being very successful. But you have to look at the at the ortho market and what's happening in, in clear liners, and just look at, at at the value and the amount of capital these companies can raise. So I think the uh, the ortho uh, space is where I would put my uh, my money. Yeah, and what I don't understand is, I mean, I know so many dentists that got into implants and they don't do clear aligners. I mean, do you realize how much harder it is to place an implant and bone graft and sinus lift and plan that case? I mean, my God, the love. I mean, I got a diplomat in the International Congress of Oral Plantology, my fellowship in the Mission Institute. That is so significantly harder to learn. And when you look at orthodontics clear aligners, I mean, I mean, gosh darn, a line is, is with Smiles Direct Club. I mean, their, their company doesn't even think you need to even work in a dental office to do clear aligners. So clear aligners, it's, um, you know, when it, it, it's, it's no shots, there's no bleeding, there's no drilling, there's no antibiotics. I mean, what, what would you need to learn, read the medical history for? I mean, it's just, it's such a um, easier entry point um, to get into. I, I think implant. So, so how are you guys? Um, so, talk about three shape and implantology. Yeah. So basically, uh, we are. We also have a lot of uh, of options with um, within uh, implantology. Actually, forty percent of our uh, scanners are used for implant cases. It varies a little bit from from market to market, but there's a massive uh, potential within implantology. We have our implant studio uh, design software where you can uh, basically design guides and so on. Uh, works both for labs and for, uh, for for clinics. And then, of course, you have all the, the benefits coming in from uh, from 3D printing. And you see a, a massive amount of new 3D printers coming out. You know, a printer which would cost 100000 a few years back is now 3500 when you buy it on the Internet or, or through your dental depot as well. So... Uh, we have solutions, again, open solutions uh, with, with the TRIA system, whether you prefer Strongman implant, Nobel implants, uh, BioHorizon implants, Neodan implants. They work with TRIAs, and you can design them in our design software. You can send them to your lab if that's what you prefer. If you want to do it in-house in with, with, with the guides in-house with a 3D printer, you can also do that. So we provide options again. Um. 
I just want to tell you how um, these European countries work. They, whenever they're coming out with something, like you say, like Avaclare is coming out with a uh, 3D printer. Um, um, the European with, with a mill, with a mill, with, with a mill. Comes out with, yeah. Their 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 product cycles every two years because they launch at the biggest dental meeting in the world, um, uh, the IDS Cologne meeting. It's the International Dental Show. It's in Cologne, Germany, one of the coolest cities on earth. I don't know if. If you've ever been to Germany, Cologne was the farthest outreach of the Roman Empire. You know, like Phoenix, before the air conditioner was invented in 1940, there was almost hardly anyone living in, in air. And you couldn't, you couldn't live in a place where it was 110 degrees every day for six months. So when you drive around Phoenix, like the oldest building you're going to find was from basically when they invented the air conditioner. But you go to Rome and Greece and see 2,000-year-old structures. Well, the Roman Empire that extended all the way into Germany at Cologne, and the city of Cologne, it still has the wall around there. It's the coolest city. But they get about 100,000 people this show. It's uh, coming up uh, March 12 to 16th in 293 days. And that's when all these companies, they, they tell, you said you were 30% of your company was, um, what did you say, 30% were scientists? Uh, of yeah, yeah, more than uh, more than thirty percent of our staff works within R and D. Yeah, R and D. So what they do yeah. is all the, all those European dental companies. Their culture is they tell their R and D, okay, you got a two year product cycle, and then you'll launch at Cologne. So I'm going to try to get the secrets from you today. What are uh -huh. you going What are you going to tell us in 293 days at Cologne that my homies can hear today? <laughs> There'll be some very, very uh, exciting news from uh, from Three Shape at uh, at Ideas. We call it the World Championship in Dental, and we have a a, a booth of over uh, six hundred square meters. I don't exactly know what it is in feet, but we have a massive booth where we will showcase our uh, our latest technology. And there will be news both within the uh, internal scanner space. There will be news within potential labs. And that will also uh, be used within uh, CPC scanners. Wow, that, that, it's amazing. And when you're in Cologne, do you eat Italian food since that city has the most Italians of all Germany? Or do you eat German food? I actually uh, eat mostly Italian food when I'm in, uh, when I'm in, in, uh, in, in Cologne. But currywurst have never been my, my favorite. But I'm going to Berlin in a month's time, so uh, I'll get a, a taste of currywurst and, and other and schnitzel as well there. But I, I like also to eat. In addition to, uh, to the, to the uh, Italian food in Germany, I also like a, a schnitzel every now and then. Yeah, it, it, it's just the greatest city. And, but, uh, and I'll tell you one more thing about the, the IDS meeting. If you walk like the speed that you just go out for a casual walk around the block with your granddaughter, um, you could not walk past every booth in the five days there. I mean, it is, would you agree with that or disagree? Yeah, it's, 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 it's a massive, I mean, all Americans says, I wish we had this exhibition in us or because it, it's biannual. So it's, it's, so they, they wish there was a similar thing in us. There's nothing which compared to ideas. We had uh, last year when it was there, we had 3,300 leads just in, in one show. It's, it's, I mean, say there was 138,000 people participating. So it's, it's enormous. And I encourage more Americans actually to come because there's people from throughout the world. But at the moment, there's far more people from South America and China coming than there are North Americans coming. And it's really worthwhile. Well, the, the, problem, the problem with the U.S. market is it's highly fragmented. So you have um, 50 states in the United States and their dental society is nonprofit, so they can hold a big meeting at a loss. So all mm. 50 states have to have their own annual meeting. And then, mm. they, and then there's some big national meetings, and it's just so highly fragmented where Europe gets it right, and they just say, look, we're only going to do this once. We're only going to do it every other year. Um, you, you can't have something new every year, uh, so we're going to do it every other year. And so they just do it once and right and every other year, and it's and uh, I, I don't think you could pull it off in America because, I mean, every hillbilly redneck state is going to have a dental meeting, whether anybody shows up or not. And and since there's so many meetings, that's why so many uh, vendors can't they can't go have a booth at 50 different meetings uh, at all these state meetings. So it's just uh, logistically impossible. Um, so are you guys privately held? Are you publicly traded? 
Uh, we are we are privately held. So basically, the the, the two co-founders uh, and actually co-CEOs today, Nikolai and Thijs, who is uh, a year younger than me, they are 44, uh, both of them. They uh, they own the majority of the company, and then uh, they have also uh, given the staff which have helped build the company uh, over the years. They have uh, given them uh, stock in the company. So it's it's uh, far primarily Nikolai and Thijs holding, and then you know selected people in the company. So, so what do you think will be the exit strategy? Do you think they'll? Uh, do you think some big conglomerate like Danaher? Do you, do you think you'll go public? Do you think you'll sell to um, Danaher, Shine, or, or what, what? What do you think the exit strategy will be? Because your stock is really uh, not liquid until it's publicly traded or swallowed up by a publicly traded company. No, I think uh, Nagel and Tice really want to hold on for, to to three shape, and they have no plans of selling the company. Of course, there's a lot of companies looking to get into the into all scanning uh, scanning market. And uh, there's not actually a lot of good into all scanners out there. There's a few, but there's not a lot. But Nikolai and Thijs don't plan to sell the company. I mean, they're 44 years old. We are in a market where there are 1 million dentists in the Western world. And, you know, over 90% of them don't have a scanner. Why sell now? The market, we are just at the beginning of the digital dentistry. And we'll change it together with dentists and lab technicians and uh, our distribution partners throughout the world. So we're just at the starting point, no plan of selling. Okay, well, if you end up do selling it, will you call me first? <laughs> yeah. I, I can't promise, but if Nikolai size allows me, I will. <laughs> but hey, um, I'll tell you what, I know you're a busy, busy man. Uh, it's uh, 7 o'clock in the morning here in Phoenix, Arizona on a Wednesday and it's uh, what four p.m. in uh, Copenhagen. Yeah, Denmark. it's getting to getting to fall. Yeah. And uh, what? And uh, I just want to tell you that um, I think your uh, your country is amazing. Um, I you know whenever you hear Americans when they talk about healthcare or something like that, they'll say, "Well, man, that that's socialized medicine. You don't want to be a socialist." I'm like, dude, you only say that because you've never been to a socialist country. I mean, you don't go to Denmark. Finland, Sweden, and Norway and say, you know what? I think Kansas and Nebraska and Oklahoma uh, do it better. I mean, it is one of the, I, I seriously think Scandinavia is the um, monument, the zenith of uh, human civilization. Uh, I just can't tell you how much I love your town, your culture. Uh, um, I don't want to go into the beer. I could, I, you, <laughs> you, you could probably try a different beer every hour for a week when you're in Denmark. you agree or disagree? Uh, I, I agree, you know, with the warning of, of, of health symptoms. But, uh, yes, you will be able to find a, a different one. And when will, Howard, when will you be back in Copenhagen? We would love to show you around. Now we have three offices in the center of Copenhagen because we have we have grown, actually, from 500 to 1,400 em employees. You know, it's, well, you know uh, what? I will uh, – Ryan and I will go there. I, I, I will o I only go to those countries if I can kill two birds with one stone. I would love to talk to your, uh, your, de your Denmark uh, Dental Association. Um, yeah. They, and you know what? And, and I have to tell you this. Um, when you are an American, you go around the world, they are always interested in the business of dentistry from an American's perspective. Uh, mo most dentists from other countries, they want to hear about your craft. They want to hear about your expertise in implants or ortho or cosmetics mm -hmm. or veneers. But when a dentist like me goes to like, uh, it doesn't matter. I've, I've lect I mean, me and Ryan in the last 12 months, we've lectured in Cambodia, Singapore, Japan, Australia. They love because uh, they, they associate America with uh, business. And mm -hmm. a lot of those countries... Um, speaking the business of dentistry is kind of taboo. A lot of countries, marketing and advertising is illegal. Like even in Hong Kong and Romania, it's against the law uh, to do a lot of the market. But, but yeah, you set up a lecture where I can lecture to uh, uh, my dentist homies in uh, Denmark. And then uh, the next day, uh, we'll go to um, um, visit your company. And then the third and yeah. fourth and fifth day, we'll just sit in a bar and drink beers from around <laughs> the world. Uh, that, that sounds, that sounds like, like a good plan. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Uh, so we love that. And I can say I was actually in Phoenix just uh, three weeks ago, just before the AAO. And uh, we'll be back. We have October 3rd to October 4th this year. We have our first three shaped community symposium where both dentists and labs uh, can attend and get, you know, continued education on the use of internal scanners, lab software and uh, our design software as well. And it'll be in, in, in Phoenix. I think we've rented a hotel which 
actually, I think all president, but Obama went to, I can't exactly remember the name, but we went to the hotel there and uh, that's in Phoenix in, in, in the beginning of October. Well, um, Josh, I, uh, send me the dates on that. Uh, and by the way, anybody yeah. listening, um, subscribe to this on a uh, YouTube channel, uh, go to dentistry uncensored, um, shoot me an email, Howard at dentaltown.com. I always like to know who's listening out there. And I keep telling everybody that about 25% are still in dental school. Everyone else is a millennial under 30, but at least once a week, I'm getting an email uh, from some guy that says, Howard, I'm a grandpa too. Uh, but uh, podcasting, it, it's, it's a young thing. But I'm really surprised. Uh, I get some of the sweetest letters from uh, uh, Tanzania, Somalia, Ethiopia, South Africa, uh, Vietnam, Cambodia, saying um, that it would take three months wages for them to buy an airline ticket to fly to America to hear any of the people on my podcast lecture. And they just can't believe uh, that we're uh, delivering some of the biggest names in dentistry for free on their smartphone all throughout Africa, Asia, Latin America. So the, so uh, the only reason this show is a success is because people like Lars Christian Lund uh, from 3Shape comes on the show. And by the way, none of these are commercials. Uh, Lars didn't uh, pay me to come on the show. I begged him to come on the show. <laughs> and uh, I, I've, been, uh, I've been begging him for a long time to come on the show. Lars Christian Lund, Vice President of 3Shape, thank you so much for giving an hour of your life to come on my show today and talk to my homies around the world. Thank you so much, Howard. It's been an absolute uh, pleasure. And when you're in Phoenix, um, we have a studio uh, at, in our home. We figured that since we had a dining room table, and no one's ever eaten on it in about five or ten years uh, that we turned out to a studio. So if you have any updates when you're in Phoenix, come by my house. I'm in the southern, I'm in the most southern part of Phoenix. So when you fly into the airport, you drive yeah. ten minutes south, and that's the end of Phoenix. Um, after okay. that, it turns into an uh, Indian reservation. And if you have any updates in October, come by the house, and me and Ryan will tape a follow-up. I will, uh, and, I will come. We will and, also have some news in October. And please get on to uh, Dentaltown and go to, um, there's 50 categories. Um, go to, uh, you could go to ethics or you could go to ortho, but, but launch your straight talk dentist.com uh, because uh, I think uh, that you're going to get the best bang for your buck posting it on Dentaltown. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. Have a great day. We have found that a lot of people are looking for uh, for alternatives in the uh, in the aligner market. Uh, there's a number of, of players uh, active in in that market, but people want more to choose from. So uh, so we have uh, and we believe in open technology. So with our scanners, we can you can connect to everyone who want to connect to us, whether it's clear correct or or others. But we've done a, a new uh, workflow which we'll do together with. Uh, with labs and with uh, with Artin and full contour, uh, and it'll basically be a, a, a workflow which allows the uh, the labs to offer um, aligners powered by three shape to their clinics. They can either either choose to do the uh, uh, the setups and so on themselves uh, in the lab, or they can go through a design service like full contour and others, uh, and then get manufacturing either themselves or if they don't have the setup for that, they can do that with uh, with Artin. So. Uh, I think it's really, dentists are looking for options. You know, when I have my, my phone here, I don't just want, no, want to be able to call AT&T customers, I want to be able to call all customers. And I think it's, it's the same with Alanis. People are looking for options. They don't want to be forced into one specific system. We are launching the uh, Three Shape community, basically where all the many Three Shape doctors, we've had a massive increase in, uh, in usage and actually doctors buying uh, Trias and they can uh, share experiences with the product, they can share cases, uh, they can ask questions and so on. So it's, a, it's an online forum where they can uh, log in with the AI, communicate, log in there. So it's open today for all customers, really facilitating dialogue doctor to doctor. It's incredible to be here, you know. A lot of people ask why I come to, uh, to Chicago in February, but when they see the, the meeting here in McCormick, you know, they know why, it's a fantastic meeting. Mm -hmm.